Hi, I'm Jordan Smith from Rapido Trains Inc. and I'm back today with another pre-production sample review and this time we're looking at our HO scale RS18Us, RSC14s and second release RS11s. Now before I get started, uh, please keep in mind these are pre-production samples and are not uh, exactly uh, production ready yet. There's still some things that need to be revised. So with that note, uh, let's, uh, let's jump right in with the uh, CP RS18Us. In the 1980s, uh, CP decided to rebuild their f rather large fleet of uh, Montreal Locomotive Works RS-18s, and that involved a complete mechanical rebuild as well as chopping uh, chopping the nose for better visibility. So as you can see, this uh, this is the RS-18U right here. Um, this unit in particular represents the the higher numbered units. Um, there was actually two slightly different versions. The earlier numbers, uh, 1800 up to I think it was the early early to mid eight, uh, 1810s had some slightly different details. Uh, these units have the slightly later details, a couple of different uh, uh, grills and stuff like that um, on the side of the long hood and a couple other small small things. Otherwise they are generally pretty much the same. So uh, let me get the uh, my handy dandy lighter here wherever it went to and we'll uh, point out some of the details to you. First off, right off the front here you can see we've got the CP Curve Pilot that was part of the rebuild project. Uh, generally, these would have had like a footboard uh, a step on the front pilot. So this is the standard kind of curve pilot that was very common on all CP engines in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and onwards. We've got the drop step, which is an etched metal part with the diamond tread on there. Um, very cool. We've got the ditch lights on uh, on the front end. We've got the uh, handrails, which have all been redone. These are different than the original uh, RS18 handrails. Uh, MU hoses, all the etch all the way around, all the walkways and steps are all uh, are all all etched metal pieces. Of course, the big uh, notable feature you've got the chop nose, nose mounted headlight, brake wheel, separate uh, sand hatch right on the front of the nose there, metal grab irons all around. We've got the really cool uh, number board uh, and class light package that uh, that CP installed on these with the bell mounted right in the center. Uh, all of the class lights do operate, as well as the, uh, as you can see, the number board lights are already on there, and we'll have a closer look at those in a couple minutes. Sinclair antenna on the roof, uh, etched metal wind deflectors, there's your dynamic brake parts, um, etched metal lift rings, there's the, uh, we've got the etched metal grate over the fan, and of course, this whole long hood has been, uh, has been retooled to represent all of the uh, RS18U details. If I actually flip this around, you can see a couple of the little vents here, um, and all the filter packs were, were modified for the uh, for the 18U rebuild project. Other thing to note, just like our first run RS18s, these have metal metal handrails all all around the sides. Other features we have on these, we've got uh, the re railers mounted just uh, just behind the air tanks there. Of course, looking at the cab here, we have the full cab interior, including the illuminated uh, gauges on the control stand. It's a very, uh, very popular feature uh, we uh, we have carried over from the first run of RS18s. And there's the uh, the truck, of course, with uh, all the brake piping and whatnot underneath. So here we have the uh, the CN uh, rebuilt RSC14. Uh, like CP in the 1970s, uh, CN found a need to uh, for for additional. Uh, light branch line power and uh, their RSC3s were, were just going into retirement. So what CN did was they took the RSC trucks, RSC3 trucks, and uh, installed them on the RSC18s when they were when they were rebuilt. Uh, some of the details you can see here, uh, you have the footboard pilots which were kept on these units as opposed to what CP was doing with the curved uh, rock pilots. Again, full uh, MU hoses. We've got the drop step, a unique drop step uh, for the uh, the RS uh, eight or RSC fourteens, all the handrails, metal grabs, the metal railings on the sides, We've separately applied uh, door latch uh, door handles. We've got all the dynamic brake detail. We'll get a closer look there. Um, the CN put the dynamics on these in the nose as opposed to CP, which had them kind of halfway back on the uh, in the in the center of the long hood. Now, another notable feature on the RSC-14s uh, was the rebuilt filter packs, which we've included on these. There's your horn, your Sinclair antenna. These were operated long hood forward, so they are angled that way. Um, there's your bell on the end. Again, lots of etch metal details. 
One of the most notable features of these, of course, is the, is the uh, former RSC-3 trucks. Uh, these were all pretty much assigned to the East Coast on a lot of the light rail branches and could be seen operating out there uh, well into the late 90s. I think uh, the Cape Breton and Central Nova Scotia uh, kept a, a number of them operating. And uh, the Salem and Hillsborough, I think, um, kept one uh, going until, uh, until they closed down. They didn't close down, but they have one as well in the museum. So well, that's a quick look at the RC-14. Uh, we'll return to this model in just a couple of minutes uh, and we'll look at the, uh, the operating uh, features uh, along with the RS-18Us. Uh, we're going to just uh, next go over to the second release RS-11s. I've got two samples here. I've got the uh, Duluth, Winnipeg and Pacific RS-11 and I've also got the Nickel Plate RS-11 which has a uh, completely different set of details. Let's put this one down for a sec. We're going to have a look at that one in a moment. So this is the Duluth, Winnipeg and Pacific RS-11. These were very early production units uh, compared to a lot of the later ones and uh, have some features which are, are, it's kind of an interesting mixture of some of the Canadian RS-18 details and the US uh, RS-11 details. So looking at the front here we've got the, uh, the again, we've got all the MU hoses, we've got the drop step, right there and a slightly different version of the end handrails they have the MU hoses or the uh, sorry we have the MU receptacles kind of mounted onto the uh, onto the railings now these were units were interesting in that they came with the dynamics like a lot of the Canadian or the CN units they have the dynamics mounted in the short nose as opposed to uh, the center part of the long hood you have the specific filter packs for the DWP units and also the lightweight uh, trucks, which were another Canadian feature which were seen on a lot of CN units. Uh, not very common, I think, at all in the U.S. It might be only the DWP that had these. A lot of cool detail as well. The etch metal uh, grates over the uh, radiators and over the fan. Uh, these also, like CN's units, were operated long hood forward. So we've got the full cab with the, uh, with the DWP style uh, uh, windows and the illuminated control stand right inside there. Horn um, interesting, uh, unique, kind of that conical exhaust stack. Metal handrails and grab irons uh, pretty much all around. Uh, etched metal steps and of course you got that really kind of interesting small fuel tank uh, with the air tanks uh, right beside it there in the, uh, in the re-railers. So next up I've got the Nickel Plate Road RS-11 which is actually totally different from the DWP units. Um, let's start off right at the uh, at the front of the nose. Again, this is a uh, a visually looks very similar to the others, but uh, you don't have the dynamics mounted in the in the short hood. You've got them in the kind of more typical uh, place in the uh, in the long hood there. You got a lot of unique NKP details. You have got the footboards, of course. You've got the bell mounted just under the uh, under the frame behind the steps. One of the most noticeable details, which we will have a look in the operating uh, portion of the video, we've got the full headlight package with the gyro light on, uh, on the short hood. Uh, long hood doesn't have that. These were operated short hood forward. And as you can see, you've got the, uh, the cab orientated uh, correctly with the uh, lit illuminated uh, uh, control stand in there. Uh, we have, again, standard uh, package of etched metal details, lift rings, uh, the really cool single trumpet uh, uh, horns which are mounted on either side of the cab, wind deflectors, etched metal, wiper blades, uh, all of that really cool detail and of course the uh, again this is the different the larger size RS-11 fuel tank. Okay well now that Jordan said his things I'm just gonna correct a few things that he missed. Um, number one, CP had rebuilt step wells on the RS-18Us we also have three different styles of battery boxes, road number specific. So we have two small louvers, we have two large louvers, and four small louver versions of the battery boxes. Uh, coming to the long hood, Jordan had mentioned about the rebuilt filters here. Also we have the original door handles have been removed by CP and EMD style knuckle dusters have been installed on all the doors. Um, moving to the top of the long hood, we actually have the U-shaped air breather pipe for the car body. The horn has been piped to the back. 
And I believe Jordan mentioned that the filters have been rebuilt, but they have not been rebuilt. They're the same as on the original RS-18s. Um, moving to the trucks, we pick up the very unique uh, domed SKF Canada bearing caps have been added to this run on that. And on the uh, handrails, you'll notice they have the rebuilt handrail that has the jog in the, at the front. Moving along to the RSC-14 on here, um, basically we have the rebuilt filter pack version here with the intercooler. That is not necessarily an RSC-14 feature. They were on the RS-18s as well and it's a feature that by road number some of the units will come with this configuration or back to our original configuration of the flatter filters and the larger intercooler may come on them. Again, it will be road number specific on that. Moving on to the DWP, um, again, Jordan called out all the features pretty much perfectly. The only thing that is, it's a conical uh, spark arrestor on the roof, on that one. And on the RS-11, um, one of the key features of that is the Northern Pacific polling pockets. They were uh, a real problem to tool and we actually came out pretty nice on that. And that's the only extra features I wanted to point out. Back to you, Jordan. Okay, so that's a quick look at the RS-11s. Uh, that's two of the versions we have in this release. We actually have quite a few different road names, each w of which are uh, tooled specifically for each railroad. So have a look at our website, uh, see all the different variations in this run. And uh, like we say before, we've said many times before, if you don't see your favorite road in this release, we'll probably do it or we'll try to do it at some point in the future. Um, so head on over the website to the website for that full list of uh, second release road names. Now, before I move on to the operating sec section of the uh, the video, I do want to point out, and this is something that, uh, that we heard loud and clear from the first release of RS-11s and 18s, is that they were very difficult to, uh, to disassemble. Uh, you may recall Jeremy did a video on how to disassemble your RS-18, which you can actually click on up in the corner here. And uh, that was a terrific little, uh, little video he did. But uh, we have redesigned these totally from the ground up to be easier to disassemble. Um, unlike the, uh, the first run, you basically take uh, the coupler boxes out, a couple other screws, and the entire body will lift off in one piece uh, from, from the chassis. This new release of RS-11 also includes a new and improved motor, which avoids the issues we found with the first release models. So here we've got the RS-18U on our test track here. So first off, uh, you can see we've got the number boards already lit. We've got the headlights on. We're going to fire it up on function 8. As mentioned before, these units have ditch lights. Let's turn those on. This is the point where normally they would go on, but the ditch lights aren't being installed until Tuesday. So let's just pretend that they're there. Also, unique to the RS-18Us are the three CP-style class lights above the number boards. There we have the extra lights, followed by the green section lights, and the red marker lights. You can also see the track inspection lights uh, just below the cab there. Those will be operating on, uh, on all the units as well. As you can see here, if you look inside the cab, you can see the fully illuminated uh, dials and gauges on the control stand. Now looking from the rear end of the unit, you can see the full light package on uh, the long hood. The headlights, number board lights, and we've got the extra lights. Um, the section lights plus the red markers. These will be installed on the models on both ends just like the prototype. So next up we have the CN RSC 14. Of course we have the headlight, number board lights on there. We also have the uh, white extra lights in the corner of the nose on both ends. As you can see we've got the track inspection lights on this unit. 
They're uh, a bit glowy, but uh, rest assured those will be looking normal once the production models arrive. They will shine down on the track instead of through the frame. And once again, like the other RS-18s, we have the lit control stand on the inside of the cab. Also, if you look closely at the trucks, you can see the rotating bearing caps. Unique feature on the RSC-14s that we included. So we're just skipping over the uh, DWP RS-11 as all of the lighting features are pretty much identical to CN's units. We've got the NKP uh, RS-11 on the track here. We've got the short hood forward orientation. Headlights are on. We've got the number board lights on. Next we will turn on the uh, uh, white uh, extra class lights. Got those on. And the gyro light, which is a unique NKP feature just below the headlights. Very nice. When we're uh, looking close up there, you can see a lot of the other uh, unique NKP details. Got the, uh, the round, set, round sand filler hatches on the nose, all the metal grabs, the brake wheel. Lots of cool details. We'll fire it up a little bit, just get rolling. Once again, we've got the full cab lighting plus the inspection lights just below the, uh, the cab frame there, on the frame. Just like all of the other RS-11s as well, you've got the uh, lighting on the long hood, you've got the number boards, the white extra class lights, and the main headlight. So thanks once again for joining me for this quick look at our pre-production RS-18U, RS-11, and RSC-14 samples. Uh, like we mentioned before, the order deadline is coming up on February 15th, and we'll be going into production with these very soon afterwards, uh, so please see your dealer, visit our website, get your order in right now. Uh, thanks once again for joining me, and have a great day. We're just going to conduct an experiment and see if the orders will increase if it's me asking you to place your orders for whatever these things are, but I'm also holding a dog. If that doesn't warm your heart, then I don't know what will. So please place your orders by February 15th. Thank you.